This is a quick walkthrough of the Kinetic Trace Utility extension, which allows you to trace requests made from the Kinetic Epicor web-based client to the server and back. This extension was created to replace some of the functionality we lost when Epicor moved their client to a web-based product. To start using the extension, simply install it from the App Store and then head over to your Kinetic homepage. Once you're in your Kinetic homepage in the browser, hit F12 to launch Developer Console, and you should see the Kinetic UX Trust Utility as one of the options to select. By default, this uh, utility is disabled. This utility is very powerful in such that it captures all traffic going in and out from the selected application. Um, so it is important that you keep it disabled if you're not going to use it. It, uh, it is also limited to capturing uh, such information on XHTTP requests initiated within the browser um, and only for the sites that has been approved to do so. So in order to start capturing, um, you're going to select Enable Trace. Um, this will pop up a window in over in the Epicor site where it's going to tell you that Epicor Trace is now enabled and that you want to refresh the page to begin tracing. This is necessary because we only turn on tracing at the beginning of the document load. Um, and at this point, Epicor has already loaded. So if you click yes, that will refresh the Epicor application and will commence the trace capture. The trace capture by default will capture your authentication headers and session headers. So I'm going to uncheck those here before we look at them. Um, that way I can keep some of my privacy. But if you can see here, there's now 12 services that we have already invoked um, in Epicor. And as I navigate around, you're going to see a lot more get added to that list. So I can see ABC code, for example, now we have to 14. I can do an ABC code selection here. Um, and so if I want to see what Epicor did or what requests were sent for each of these services, I can select the service and then I can get a list of the methods that were called for that given business object. For example, get rows. Get rows was called by the application and here was the input to the request and here was the output or the response to the request. Right. And if I enable the, the authentication header and the session header and even the call context, um, those get put into our trace. This will let us uh, allow us to easily compare the inputs and the outputs that were sent from the client to the server um, and hopefully help us generate a better um, feel of how the application works so that we can replicate it in our BPMs functions and other areas. Um, you also have this generate curl button here, uh, which is pretty powerful. What this will do is, uh, if you have a selected um, method, um, you can hit the generate curl button, which will um, read the request and generate a curl command that will replicate that request, which can then be imported directly into Postman uh, pretty easily. So let's walk through that. In order for this to work, I'm going to go ahead and write out my auth header and my session header so that I can actually make the request in Postman. So let's do that um, real quick. So I'm going to write my auth header and my session header and even my call context header and I'm going to hit generate, generate curl. What this will do is it will generate a curl command that I can then copy paste back into Postman, click import, and simply paste that curl command directly in here. That entire curl command is now imported into Postman and you can simply hit send to replicate that call. That's a pretty powerful way to test your APIs um, and the APIs that Epicor uses in the client in Postman so that you can more easily troubleshoot and debug. You also have the option um, to save a, a dump of your session. So if you want to record a session and come back and troubleshoot it later, you can simply hit, hit save dump, um, and that will save your session uh, into a dump file, which you can then uh, load back up by using the load dump function. The load dump and the save dump actually work without the trace being enabled, which is pretty cool. So you can disable tracing uh, you can record, you can save your dump, you can disable tracing, and then you can always come back here and use the load dump to load it back up and then do some more uh, troubleshooting. Um, you can always clear your trace, uh, reset your settings, um, and we did add the ability to change the look and feel of the editor down here for those that particularly like it. I think Dracula is one of the more popular ones, so you can change that there too. Again, it's a pretty powerful tool. It is very intrusive. It gets in the middle of the requests between your Epicor application and the server. So you want to make sure that when you're not using it, you disable the login. 
When you do that, it is going to ask you if you want to refresh again. You want to say yes to that, and that will stop capturing all the traffic coming in from Epicor. You can verify that that's happening um, simply by clearing your trace here um, and then doing some behavior in Epicor. You should see that there is nothing uh, added to the capture at that point. Hopefully this is helpful. Thank you.